Welcome to my Deploy Microservices on OpenShift 3, this Red Hat Developer Studio uh, presentation. Uh, my name is Fred Dricon. Um, I've been working for the past five years at Red Hat uh, on the DevOps Tools and Dev Studio team. I'm currently based in Canada. Um, if you heard about me, maybe um, I'm a committer on the Maven for Maven integration project, uh, M2E and an M2E W2E project at Eclipse. Uh, so if you've used Maven or Maven and Java E and you had bugs, that's on me. Um, currently, I'm I'm working on OpenShift tooling uh, for Eclipse as part of the uh, DevOps tools and Dev Studio uh, development. So today, um, this talk is uh, designed to teach you how to deploy and scale a Docker-based microservices uh, on the OpenShift container platform, running on the Red Hat Container Development Kit and using the Red Hat Developer Studio. So a lot of the concepts that um, I'm gonna talk, I've been introduced already by Pradeep uh, in the talk before me. So I'm gonna just uh, make a quick overview of the products I'm gonna demonstrate. Um, First of all, the OpenShift Container Platform um, is Red Hat's platform as a service product. It's deployable uh, on-premise, uh, locally on your machine, uh, on an hybrid or public cloud. You can apply for uh, the online preview um, if you want to try it for yourself. And it's based on, on open source projects, uh, which are the uh, OpenShift, OpenShift Origin project. Um, which itself is based on the Kubernetes uh, container uh, management um, project, uh, as well as uh, Docker, uh, which is a lightweight container. Um, so the container development kit uh, is a, a container development environment uh, provided by Red Hat. Uh, it's based on an, an upstream project called Atomic Development Bundle. Uh, it requires a zero dollar subscription. Uh, it's free for development use. So that means that you go to the Red Hat website uh, and there's a link uh, over there. You you go to that website, you download a couple of, a couple files. So one is the zip file um, containing a Vagrant file and Vagrant plugins, as well as a virtual machine image um, that matches your preferred uh, virtualization engine, whether it's VirtualBox, uh, Libvirt, or whatever. So as I said, it's a, it's a virtual machine. Uh, it's based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, it's running with Vagrant. And it's interesting for us because it contains uh, the OpenShift container platform I mentioned earlier, as well as a Docker registry that we're gonna use uh, for, for our demonstration. So if you go to this website, um, CDK Overview, you can get started uh, easily. You download um, so the zip file, as I said. So container, I think that's it. And then the uh, virtual box, uh, the um, virtual machine image uh, that fits for you. Um, next, <coughs> the next uh, product product we're going to use for our demonstration is Red Hat Developer Studio. Uh, it's a, an Eclipse-based distribution. Uh, it's based on both uh, the Eclipse project uh, and, and JBoss tools. It's mostly focused on Java E development as well as Docker, JavaScript, and OpenShift tooling. And you can download it from the tools.jbos.org website or um, the marketplace. Uh, it's also available as an entry in the marketplace uh, at Eclipse. So um, <coughs> about the demo, uh, we're gonna deploy a Hello World microservices architecture project, uh, which is based on a tutorial available on GitHub which basically uh, 
I think there's a yeah in here. Is there a screenshot of the uh, front end? Uh, basically, it's a an over engineered uh, Hello World application where we have uh, multiple services talking to each other, and we're going to deploy each well. All these services are deployed on all, on the uh, local OpenShift instance that I got running on my machine, and <coughs> this this um, tutorial uh, mainly acts as acts as a way to to educate you about all the um, different ways for uh, microservices to to communicate with it with uh, one another. So. We'll see that in, in a moment, but um, all these services are are um, written in different technologies. Uh, so we have Vertex. Uh, we have um, Vertex is a event-driven uh, application framework. Uh, we have uh, Wildfire Swarm, Node.js, and Spring Boot. Um, but this demonstration will uh, mostly focus on the tools that I'm going to show, not particularly the code or the architecture itself, even though we're going to skim through it. Um, and the goal is to demonstrate the deployment and scaling cap capabilities that uh, OpenShift provides and, and how Red Hat uh, Developer Studio helps you with. So uh, we might need to um, get familiar with some key uh, OpenShift and, and Kubernetes concepts, uh, which are really oversimplified. So we are gonna be um, we're gonna met, meet some some uh, resources uh, in the OpenShift uh, world. Uh, for instance, the project is a Kubernetes namespace um, improved, uh, so it will allow you to, to uh, manage different kind of resources under the same namespace. Uh, we'll see an image stream, which monitors image, uh, Docker image deployment. Uh, pod is a, is a something that manages Docker containers. Uh, a service is a load balancer for pods. Uh, and finally, a route is the entry point to, to a service. So uh, typically, the URL that will be entered in the browser will <coughs> point to a service, which then be uh, the service will then load balance uh, the query to any of the pods that are running. And if we deploy an image, then the image stream will uh, listen for the deployment and um, uh, spin up a new pod with the new image. All right, so without further ado, um, let's see my workspace. Uh, so I got um, the projects that are uh, listed in the uh, tutorial on GitHub. Uh, they're already imported in Eclipse. Then what I want to do is start a, an OpenShift instance uh, directly from Eclipse. So how do I do that? I can go to the quick access uh, text box here and launch the container uh, development environment. Here, um, I will, using my credentials that, it, that I use, use with the, the uh, Red Hat account, um, I will select the location of the Vagrant file I've uh, unzipped. Okay, and click finish. <coughs> And <coughs> a server adapter will be created in the service view. And this, this server adapter basically uh, calls the vagrant command, vagrant up command on the vagrant file. And the vagrant, uh, vagrant itself will spin up a, an OpenShift instance. Um, um, the CK server adapter will also create for me a connection to the open that OpenShift instance, and it will also create a Docker connection uh, that I can see in the Docker Explorer here. So, if I look at my OpenShift uh, instance, I can see one project 
called Greeter. My project contains several services uh, that are currently deployed. And what I want to do is look at the front end, which is the most important one. Uh, and I will show it in the br web browser. So here we have uh, on the first tab, the browser acting as a client to all the different uh, services. Each service, as you can see, is uh, displaying hello in different languages. Uh, hola in, in Spanish, hola in Portuguese, aloha in Hawaiian. And the bonjour service is currently not running. Uh, so we're displaying a fallback uh, string. Um, so there are different ways to for, for microservices to communicate with one another. Uh, one possible architecture would be to for the browser to, to talk to one single uh, endpoint, which is the API gateway. And that API gateway service is itself talking to uh, my four other microservices. So again, I can see that the um, the other responses from the different services and the bonjour, the bonjour response is just not responding for the moment. So um, this tutorial is pretty nice in the sense that, in the way that it shows you how to uh, degrade gracefully when your microservices are not running. Um, so I won't go into the de too much details in the code, but if you, if you really want to learn about how microservices should behave, uh, this is really a good tutorial. Uh, finally, we have the service chaining, chaining um, uh, tab where the browser talks to only one service, which itself uh, chains the, uh, <coughs> the calls to, to, the, uh, to another one, then another one, then the last one, the, the module service, which is still not responding. So it's about time we do something about it. So let's see how we can deploy our service using Docker. So the Bonjour, the Bonjour application is a Node.js app. So we have a package JSON file that I just uh, changed to have uh, the Nodemon um, process instead, no, uh, instead of Node initially. Uh, the Nodemon process will basically listen to changes to the Bonjour uh, file and if it detects a change in that file, it will um, kill the the, the, uh, the process and restart it. So um, before I deploy it, let's look at the uh, Docker file. Uh, the Docker file, as you can see here, is very simple. It takes everything in the current directory and will copy it in under opt app root source. Uh, then it will, it will expose port 8080 uh, and issue the npm start command. So before I can deploy my, my Docker image, I will need to build my app. So I will click on the, NP, the package JSON file and do run as npm install. So I did it I made it pretty quick, so I only uh, removed one node modules uh, folder here so that it could build uh, pretty fast uh, for the purposes of this demo. But basically, right now I have everything in place, so I can take my Docker file and, and create a Docker image. So I will run as Docker image build. I will connect to the container development environment connection and we'll use the greeter bonjour name. So the Docker tooling uh, allows me to build Docker images directly from within Eclipse. I don't need to go through the command line, which is pretty nice. It will take a few seconds to, to build the image and then we'll see the Docker image here there it is, uh, in the list of images in that container development environment. So the thing is, uh, at that point, the image only lives in the, in the daemon. 
um, for OpenShift to see it, we need to push it to the Docker registry living on the CDK. So uh, if we go back to the connection and edit it, you will see that uh, the CDK uh, configured that connection and exposed the, uh, the Docker registry under this URL. So that's convenient for us. So what I'm gonna do now is right click on my image and do deploy to OpenShift. So I wanna deploy my Docker image to the greeter project on OpenShift. I could create a new one if I wanted. Um, this is the image name that I'm gonna use. Um, I got uh, auto completion here um, if I wanted to choose something else. Um, and the resource name will be, uh, which is used by a uh, convention is Bonjour. So I wanna push it to the registry, click next. Here I got a list of the, the deploy yeah, deployment environment variables I can uh, modify if I want. I will uh, use one replica. Uh, the replica is the number of pod instances that are currently, that are running at any given time. Uh, I got one port that is exposed and one route that will be created. Uh, I can add labels if I want, and then I finish. And what's gonna happen now is the Docker image will be pushed to the Docker registry on, on, the, uh, on the CDK. Um, once it's created, an image stream will be created on OpenShift. And after that, we'll create a couple other resources in OpenShift. Uh, we'll have a service, we'll have a, a route, and a deployment config. The deployment config basically says, I'm gonna listen to this, to this uh, image stream changes. So it's gonna take a few more uh, seconds. It can be quite long sometimes. Uh, any questions so far? Everything's crystal clear, perfect. Um, in the meantime, I can do some nasty things. Go back to game forward. So um, every pod that is currently running, uh, so I didn't show you the pods here. Um, so every service has currently one pod. Uh, I can go to say the cron end and right click on the pod log menu. It will display the current pod, the current logs for, for that pod. But I can see the exact same thing if I go to the uh, running containers. Uh, oh, my deployment's finished. So I can see my running containers, uh, the cron end uh, container here. I can display the log as well. Um, and the nasty things I can I was talking about is that I can execute shell commands. I SSH into the container. I can do stuff like uh, this. I can take the uh, node front end GS uh, process and do something like kill. So what happens if I kill the process? Apparently nothing. So <coughs> uh, yeah, here the the container I killed was uh, almost immediately replaced by a new one. So OpenShift allows you to well definitely monitors the, the app for you, and if something goes wrong, it will spin up a new new instance. So my application is still running, which is awesome. And as you can see, the Bonjour service is now up and running. Um, the API gateway works as well, and service chaining works as well. So um, at that point, um, we can see that pushing a Docker file, push, pushing a Docker image 
uh, takes quite some time. So we'll see if there's another way to make it quicker to update our stuff. So let's go back to the OpenShift Explorer. And for the Bonjour app, we're gonna do, we're gonna create a server adapter. I'm gonna use the Bonjour project here. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna map the sources in our workspace to a process that will, on, on any changes in my workspace, that will deploy all these changes directly to the con running container. And because I set my uh, nodemon uh, process instead of node, uh, if I change something in the bonjour, um, bonjour uh, file, then hopefully I should see the uh, results immediately uh, on, on my service. So let's change it to, let's say, save it. Refresh. There you go. That's pretty cool. Um, another feature that's pretty nice is that we can scale uh, pause uh, as we want from Eclipse. So we're gonna scale up our pod. We've got two pods running, two pods running now. So if I go back to my browser, I refresh the results. I can see here the name of the host is changing because my service acts as a load balancer and will run Robin all the requests to all the, to the different pods. So I can add another one. There you go, three pods running. I can decide to, to scale down to zero if I want, it's possible. And <coughs> I should not get any more results now. But, uh, the last thing that's probably interesting to, to see now is the, uh, the link to the web console, which, will, which is pretty nice. Uh, just right click on the menu uh, showing web console and you have uh, the nice UI directly in, a, in the browser. So I can uh, go back and spin my Bonjour service directly from the console and if I go back to Eclipse, I will see that my pod is appearing directly. No, no refresh necessary, everything is uh, synchronized automatically. So uh, I think that's pretty much the extent of what I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, if you guys are, have any questions, um, now is the time. Yeah, everything is running on my machine. Yes. Yeah, so basically a pod or, or multiple pods can run in one node. I have one node, and a, a node is a machine, uh, whether it's a virtual machine or a physical machine. Um, and if you're an administrating OpenShift, you can decide how to set up your nodes on, on different machines. In your, it, this is your cloud, you, you do however you want. Uh, for development purposes, the CDK helps me to set up uh, the uh, OpenShift environment on my machine. Uh, and because this is running on a virtual machine, uh, it's, it, it works on, on Windows, on, on Linux, on, on Mac. So it's really multi-platform, it's pretty nice. All right, so here are a few links um, that might be uh, interesting uh, for you. If you have any uh, feedback, uh, if you wanna try it, and you have any feedback on the uh, Eclipse tooling, 
I suggest that you open bugs or enhancement requests on uh, the Jira project here. Um, that's it. Thank you.